a sunny day in Massachusetts so we come out to a local hill called Blue Hill for hiking the trail is now crowded so this is a pretty pretty good place for social distancing Yesterday, state of New York had over 32,000 confirmed cases, which is higher than the peak of Hubei province in China, Daiguing, Korea, or Italy. So it's real, it's happening. Uh, what I want to do today is to talk about the stories behind all of those outbreaks so that we can get a sense of what caused those outbreaks as well as when it's gonna end. Let's first start with China. And by the way, I'm not gonna tell every bit of details in how it happens, but some of the important facts I want to point out. The first cluster of folks with the symptom happening early to mid December of 2019 by Late December, some doctor pointed out that this looks like SARS, so basically a coronavirus. However, uh, the local authority were very delayed in response. The, about 10 doctors who warned the society of this new virus, actually police talked to them, asked them not to spread the rumor, which really delayed the, the response to this virus. I think the earliest possible time that government could have a reasonable response is probably January the 1st but because of the the action of, of the local authority nothing really happened until January 23rd when the central government in Beijing took over and shot down Wuhan the lack of actions um, between January 1st to January 23rd which is when the shutdown happens really make things spread in not only Wuhan but also Hubei province. Starting from January 23rd then that's when the number of cases just shoot up. It went from 100, 200 a day all the way to the highest of like 3,100. Eventually tens of thousand people were infected and 3,000 people passed away. Um, so I think the delay of three weeks really caused a massive outbreak in in Hubei. The, the positive news, however, is that um, the action once the central government took over was quite decisive. So shutdown happened January 23rd for Hubei as well as the rest of the country. So for the rest of the country, that the spread really didn't take off. I'm going to show the ch chart of Beijing, a city of 20 million people. At the highest, the daily confirmed cases is only about 40, 45. It never took off and it was well under control back to Hubei Wuhan it took about 12 days from January 23rd to February the, the 4th for the daily confirmed cases which is the best leading indicator you can see how many people have infected to reach the peak then it start to fall off the peak and eventually it's under control fast forward to today China has many provinces without any new infected people for about two weeks and small businesses are starting to run. Now let's move on to Korea. Korea was actually watching China's uh, action very closely, which is working well. However, what's caused Korea's outbreak is that there's a, there's a sort of cult, I don't know how to correctly pronounced the, uh, the name in Korean but it's sort of like New World Church um, they have the daily aggregation of a lot of people hundreds if not thousands people are sitting right next to each other uh, you're not uh, allowed to wear a mask because if you wear a mask that will be shown as disrespect for the God um, because of this despite the, the tight control for the rest of Korea this church they start they, they continue to have daily aggregation which effectively spread the virus suddenly like hundreds and thousands of people um, start to get infected when government start to intervene and try to quarantine the people 
from this church or the cult, uh, which were probably what we should call it, uh, they refuse to give the entire roster. So they give some roster which has about 80-90% of uh, members, but they leave some roster out. So it took uh, a few days for Korean government to get this under control. Um, but once they get this under control, I think starting from February the 20th, they shut down the city. They took full control of this church with the quarantine. Uh, people follow the order. Nobody's on the street. By March the 2nd, that's when the daily confirmed cases reach the peak. About 12 days, it's under control. Uh, the rest is history. Now, if you look at Korea for the entire country, daily confirmed cases is like less than 100 or 100, which is, which is really nothing compared to the rest of the world. Next up is Iran. This is the third country with massive outbreak. There are a lot of debate around whether the government reported number are suppressed. I don't have any facts, but if you look at the death rate, it does look like the number of cases is underreported. But for now, let's stick to the official numbers. The first case was reported um, on February the 19th. For the first week, uh, a week to 10 days, instead of fighting the virus, the government is trying to convince people that there's, it's not a threat. Uh, on February 26, a week after the, the first confirmed cases, and by, by then, the, the cases were, were rapidly rising. The president uh, announced that there's no plan to quarantine the area, just the individual, which turned out to be a bad decision. And the same day he announced that um, people who are posting videos and messages online about uh, the coronavirus uh, being worse than what it is, what, what the government announced uh, is forbidden. And um, I think the following day about somewhere between 100 to 150 people were arrested. Uh, of course, that didn't help contain the virus. And it's, it's not until the March the 5th uh, before they start to announce uh, the actions such as uh, limit the traffic, shut down the school. It's not until March the 9th before they do a massive disinfection of the street. It's not until the March the 16th, I believe, before they start to do things like close down the religious shrine when where they have massive number of people aggregating. So instead of having decisive action like China and Korea, they wait for a long time before they act and they didn't do like everything at once. They kind of gradually do things from March the 5th to uh, March the 16th, 17th, 18th. So you can see that number of cases continue to climb. Because of things they're doing, it did reach a plateau, but it never dropped off like China and Korea. If they do something at the beginning of March, probably by now it's already on the way down. Before I move to European countries, I do want to point out that there are many places uh, in Asia where they have pretty strict uh, quarantine. It was well under control uh, for many of the dense populated uh, places such as the China outside of Hubei province, such as Singapore, Hong Kong, um, as well as Taiwan. Now let's move on to Italy. Italy, it's a very interesting case where the government actually um, act pretty quickly. Italy is uh, one of the first country to shut down the, the air traffic uh, from and to China. And when the uh, initial Lombardy outbreak happened in Lombardy where there weren't a lot of cases, uh, they shot down the area. It shot down about 11 tons. So that was pretty fast. The problem is very inter interesting is that while the government put things in place, um, the people don't follow orders. Uh, for example, Milan is pretty close to uh, where the initial outbreak was. It's in the Lombardy region, but it was not one of the places, one of the 11 towns that were shot down around February 20th. But uh, the government did come out to say, I believe it's starting February 23rd, around 22nd or 23rd, they said, uh, no restaurant and bars can be open after six o'clock. So instead of following the order the next day, 
those people to get together to have a protest against this policy. The next day, the city take away the curfew. The restaurants and bars became open. A lot of people just went on the street to celebrate, to, to, to have meals together. There's some like pretty famous politician. I'm going to find you the name when I edit this video. Not only, only he went out, but also he gathered a group of people. They went out to, uh, to dine outside. And he was captured on Biden TV interview. And he was saying to the, the camera that, look, Milan is safe. You know what happened? On March the 7th, he showed up on his uh, Twitter account and tell everybody that he's infected. I'm not saying that he's infected on that day, but when it, the outbreak is happening near you, you're still doing things like this, the result is inevitable. I'm not gonna list like everything like this happening in Italy, but just at least a few. Milan Fashion, Fashion Week was going on pretty late in the process before they closed it down. Closed the end of the February, which is well after the uh, initial lockdown in Italy, there's a big soccer match happening in Lyon in France where thousands of L Italy fans attend the game. Not only it's going to spread among Italy, this is going to make it go into France. And the rest of the story in Italy is, is relatively well known. A day or two before the shutdown, uh, the local news leaked the decision of shutting down to to the public. We see massive amount of traffic leaving the northern region trying to flee to the south. That's uh, just a lot of people gathering, which is a bad idea. And if you can see the data, the rest of Italy, the number of cases were shooting way up. The early shutdown weren't that effective because people are not following the order. And the real shutdown happened in around March the 10th. And today is March the 22nd. In theory, this is, you know, if the things were like China and Korea, this is the wrong time that the case is gonna, gonna peak. So we'll see, we'll see if this is the case. After the recording, I came back home and watched numbers. It's fantastic that the number in Lombardy start to come down, come down two days in a row. This is really good news because it's his third country we see the number come down after about 12 to 14 days of the hard quarantine, which gave hope for the rest of the world. The story in the rest of the Europe is pretty similar to Italy. People don't consider this a thing when it's not in their country yet. When it's blowing up in Italy, France is still having parades, protests on March the 1st and the 2nd. I think March the 6th, thousands of people gather together to have the Smurf parade. What the heck? Why you have that? And of course, you can see the number in France is still shooting up. Similar thing happened in Spain. They're still, they still holding the festivals, having marathon. I'm not going to list everything, but you can see what the number tell us. I hope by now that the pattern is clear. The outbreak only happened when you let it go by itself without any control. This happened in China, Korea, Italy, so on and so forth. Either it's because of slow reaction from government or people don't follow the rules. But if we do put effective quarantine in place, either it's a, it's a hard lockdown like Ch in China or it's a softer lockdown like in Singapore, Korea, and people do follow the order, an outbreak can come under control within about two weeks. What does this mean for, for the US? So for New York, where we already have a massive outbreak, please stay inside. And with the lockdown, the data will peak in about two weeks and things will gradually get better. It took two months in China for people to gradually go back to work and the, the small business gradually opening. So, so please stay home so that it only take two weeks for us to reach the peak and less than two months for us to gradually go back to the norm for vast majority of the United States most states we don't have outbreak yet it's not too late for us to stay home or keep the social distancing so that we don't turn the current situation into an outbreak for places like state of Washington California uh, Michigan Illinois I think we're on the verge so it what we do do matter. It's not too late. Thank you.